Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the API Pi gem for Rails. It's a really, really neat app. I'm, I was very excited to discover it recently when our company implemented it for our own, for our own API. So what, what is API Pi? Why is it cool? What can you do with it? Have you heard of it before? <laughs> I'm about to give you sort of an introduction and then we will jump right into looking at implementing it. So API Pi is a really easy way of writing documentation for your API-based Ruby on Rails app. When you have lots of controllers and you have lots of models, it's sort of hard to like wrap your mind around what every single action entails. And I wish I could show you, you know, of course, our company's app has a couple dozen controllers, tons and tons of models, and then just more API endpoints than like one person could possibly keep in their head at the same time. And so what API Pi does is generates documentation and you can customize it and then you can view it all in one place as if it was basically just a page like, you know, this, where it just has like the name of the method and what it does. So we're just going to be doing a simple example today with a with a Rails app that has one controller and one model, but you can and so its power won't be like apparently obvious. But you can imagine if you had many more controllers, if you had lots more models, if you had namespaces for your controllers because you're keeping track of different versions and so on, it is extraordinarily useful, and that's why I'm really excited to share it with you today. So you can go here to get it, or I should say to look at it. Obviously, you'll be putting it in a gem file. And so let's just dive right in. So I made a new Rails app called API Pi Example. And we're going to hop in there and add API Pi Rails to the gem file. Now, I would like to point out it is summer 2016 rails 5 just came out api pi works kind of with rails 5 at this point i'm sure that in the not too distant future it will be updated to be much more compatible but if you're if you're having issues with it just know that and if you have issues with it and you're doing it on rails 5 just know that you're not the only one and that's probably there's probably some kinks going on on the inside that will be resolved before too long i'm doing this on Rails 4, 4.2, I believe, 2 or 3, something like that. Anyways, open your app, put in the API Pi Rails gem, bundle install, and what you're going to do now is a rake task, which will install it, or I should say, install the particular files and make some other changes under the hood. So that's bundle, exec, rake, API Pi, install. Ooh, no, it's not. You know what it is? It's Rails G API Pi, install. So now th that's all hooked up, and now we have to have some resource to apply it to. So we're just going to do a, a scaffold for user, for example. Rails G scaffold user and we'll just give it a name. Nothing crazy going on there, just creating the scaffold and migrating it. Now, if we come over to our app, there will be the user's controller, of course, and let's start the server. So you, of course, recognize this happy page, and to access the API Pi documentation that gets generated, it will be at the URL path root slash API Pi. So there should be nothing here so far, and that's fine. Because we haven't set anything up yet. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can implement API Pi on each of the various methods in your controllers. So we're going to start out with the most simple one, which is just API and then the exclamation mark. And when you do that, that gives you this, basically. 
What kind of request is it? It's a GET request. And what's the path for it? It's users. Now, the downside is that this shortcut API bang doesn't give you the ability to do a description. So from there, what you can do is say API get, so you specify the type, and then the path, and then the description that you actually want it to show. And then get rid of the API exclamation mark, and you'll have well, you'll have something wrong. <laughs> um, so for some reason, it's showing slash API prepended to slash users. Hmm, that's weird and obviously incorrect. I will pause this and debug that and then come back when I've fixed it. All right, so I figured out what's going on. In the configuration for API Pi, which you can find at config initializers api.pi.rb there is a default base URL and it is this slash API that you see erroneously appended here so change that to empty quotes and you have to kill and restart your server and it's now correct so all right interesting situation this I'm sure is helpful if you're this this would probably be the place to do like if you're making namespace changes for example and you could say like this is v1 versus this place this other place is v2 these comments here sort of give away the path and everything but as you're generating more and more complex controllers it won't necessarily be obvious what the path to that particular action is and so what i'm going to do just for the sake of demonstration is do the API bang on each of the rest of these and just see what it generates for us. So you can see, all right, the show, that's a get request, and its path is slash users slash ID, and it gets the show page for a user. There you go. And and so on and so on. You can go all the way down. You know, you could say like, post users creates a user. And again, like I said before, this is sort of looking not that amazing or too esoteric because it's just one resource and one controller but you can definitely see yourself in situations in the future where you'll have very complex applications and you'll need to be able to convey to other developers on your team or future developers what users slash ID slash photos slash ID slash come up with your own complex relationship between models you know and insert that there um, explain to people how that all works and API Pi is a great tool to make that happen for you and as you can see this like didn't really take that much intervention on our part we just kind of put in the this you know a one-liner that's all th the intervention that was required on our part there's actually a lot more like a lot a lot more that the the readme on the github page has and I will of course put a link for that in the description. So I hope you find this as useful as I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.